Martin. It's uh, Trout Mask replica time now. This is for Neil Peterson. And it's also for the bloke... I assume it was a bloke, possibly a bloke, could have been anybody really, who broke into my car last night, punched a hole in one of the back windows and went in there and, uh, well, took nothing at all, actually. They didn't take my fall tapes and they didn't even take my small collection of tiger tokens. I was quite grateful for that. But uh, it is irritating when those sort of things happen, you know, because you think, yeah, I'd like to have left a note in there saying, which is, would have been true. There is nothing in this car that is worth having. I mean, there really isn't, you know. And uh, it's an old car, so it's not worth stealing. And when it was a newer car, uh, I thought perhaps the best security thing that I could do, which I used to do, and it worked because the car was never stolen, was to leave a pair of dirty underpants on the driver's seat. There you go, there's a little hint for you that you, you won't get from the AA, but as I say, it worked for me, and, uh, but then again, you know, set against the scale of human suffering, the things we see on television night after night, having your car uh, broken into is pretty small beer, really. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. It's the machine that does that, just cuts them off like that. I wrote them a greasy letter and they never wrote back, but nevertheless, I continue to play their records. Those are the Swirlies, and it's called Pancake Cleaner, and it comes from a CD called Broke Dick Car. My own car, actually, you'd be interested to know this, is uh, fast approaching 200,000 miles on the clock, and we're going to have a bit of a celebration when it does. This doesn't really affect you, but I thought I'd just let you know. And uh, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, yes, I've had one or two uh, letters, quite a few uh, stamped addressed envelopes from people who want copies of the Phantom 50. For example, uh, Robin Chu, who writes me from Lemon and he says, was it spelled Phantom 50, spelled P-H-I-F-T-Y? It should have been, actually, I must admit, and I hadn't thought of that until right now, but I shall go back and retype it and spell it thus. I've been away and have missed its gripping climax, he says. So if an, uh, anybody else wants uh, copies of the Phantom 50, send us a stamped addressed envelope and address it to uh, Towselhead John Peel, uh, BBC 1FM, Radio 1FM. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm reading Robin's address and he's got it completely wrong. Let me find one that's right. That's wrong as well. Hold on a second. Anyway. Anyway, it's uh, John Peel, 1FM, London, W1N4DJ. That'll do nicely. So if you send a stamped addressed envelope, I'll send you a copy of the Phantom 50. If you've already sent me a stamped addressed envelope with this in mind and you haven't received your copy of the Phantom 50, this is because I haven't yet typed it up properly. But I will do, I will do, after I've got uh, festivals and things out of the way. Uh, this is called Mukila Way. And you may recall, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I was muttering away about perhaps playing you at some stage really embarrassing records that I bought as a kid and I thought because of the move to daytime you're expected to do lots of lively and amusing spots like that along with inter interviewing uh, rather boring people in rock bands and that sort of thing but uh, I thought I'd have a kind of practice run out so uh, this is a record which I bought well many many years ago obviously uh, you need to listen fairly closely to the lyrics of this if you can bear to and uh, some of you may know some of you have mentioned in your letters actually I write a regular column each week for the Radio Times and it's supposed to be about television I'm slightly disadvantaged in this in that I very seldom watch television. More than one person has spotted this, actually, and pointed it out in their letters. But uh, writing for the Radio Times, it does attract a rather special school of loonies. And I've been going through some of the letters in the course of the afternoon, because they arrive with all of the other mail that's addressed to the BBC. And you find, uh, quite often, they just put down something like, you know, a biblical, uh, not a quotation exactly, but they'll put down something like Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 14. And you look it up, and it says... For it is not written, for is it not written, that they shall go forth, and having gone forth, shall return. Yea, even in their returning shall they return. And you think, right, well, I suppose, <laughs> what can you say? And they never give their addresses or their names or anything, so you can't write back and say, what are you on about? This is the last from the Knights of the Occasional Table. I've uh, just been on the phone to the pig to check that everything's all right at Peel Acres, and she's been having a most interesting afternoon. You know how it is that occasionally, you know, when you're on, uh, say, the tube or the bus, are just wandering about, you see famous people. I mean, it's not really them at all, but it looks amazingly like them. I saw Adlai Stevenson getting off the tube at Hoban, for example, a couple of weeks ago, which was a great surprise, because I think he's dead. And uh, she was uh, shopping this afternoon in Bury St Edmunds, bumped into Terry Waite. Except it was the real Terry Waite, and uh, she hasn't fully recovered from that. Very big, she said he was. And uh, I should uh, tell you, because I want you to feel sorry for me, um, uh, over Christmas I was really hoping that I was going to do really boring stuff, a really sad way of spending Christmas, really, sorting out records, because they're in such chaos at home that uh, really it makes it very difficult for me to find things. When somebody says, can you play me a track, particularly on a compilation LP, uh, it can take me like two or three hours to find it, and sometimes I don't find it at all. So I thought, right, I'll sort all of this out over Christmas. And uh, I just started doing it, and I've got some kind of repetitive strain injury from carrying armloads of records up a ladder. And uh, I about two days after I'd done all of this, my back suddenly went, and uh, I've been in a lot of pain. I still am, as a matter of fact. And uh, on my way into town, I had to get out of the car like four or five times with great difficulty uh, because my back was seizing off completely. And I thought, if I'm going to get to London and just sit in the car all night, you know, it's not going to go down terrifically well. Unless it's not with everybody. Um, 
and uh, the only position in which I can be entirely comfortable is on all fours, but they haven't yet developed the technology for me to do programmes on all fours as yet. Uh, so uh, occasionally I shall leap to my feet, but you won't, you won't be able to tell, of course, but I want you to know that I'm in a great deal of pain. And very nice, too. That's Delicatessen in session, classic adventure. And I had a classic adventure myself this very morning. In fact, uh, you're extremely lucky, if that's the right word to use in this context, that I'm here at all, because uh, after last night's programme, I went back to my lonely little hotel in, in Paddington because nobody loves me and nobody cares. And I, I went to bed. I got to sleep about quarter to two, something like that. I was very hot, obviously. And uh, lying, I'm ashamed to say, naked on top of the bed and... Um, well, I don't want to get you too aroused, so I'll pass on to about 7 o'clock this morning, and there I am lying on the top of the bed, as I say, and I'm woken by a great rush of cold water pouring out of the ceiling. Not just pouring out of the ceiling, but actually pouring out of the light, uh, you know, the light system up there. And uh, even I, with my very slight grasp of technology, know that electricity and water do not combine happily together. And I thought... If I stay here, I'm going to be electrocuted. So I flung myself out of the bed and uh, stood there and watched the water pouring through the ceiling, absolutely soaking the bed. And quite clearly, there was no prospect of my getting back into the bed. Uh, eventually, it did stop after about a quarter of an hour. By then, everything was very, very damp indeed. So I tried to phone the reception area and uh, no response at all. Nobody down there. So uh, I got dressed and very grumpily, as you might imagine, went down there. And uh, I told the woman who was in there, it was American, I think, actually, that, uh, you know, that my night's sleep had been somewhat disrupted by this in addition to which, uh, uh, you know, I had a brush with death. And her response was, uh, gee willikers. Actually, I made that bit up, but it <laughs> might as well have been. She said, uh, we're going to have to get that fixed. And I was expecting her to say, listen, you know, have a month's free stay in our hotel. We'll give you a free breakfast, everything. No, gee, we're going to have to get that fixed. And uh, I was tempted to say to her that in America, of course, I'd have had the basis of what they call a Class A action. I'm not quite sure what that means, actually, but I could have sued them for almost everything, I would have thought, uh, you know, distress. And uh, uh, people always, of course, bring in a lack of sexual potency after any kind of unpleasant experience. I mean, the list is almost limitless. This next comes out of uh, Red Eye Records in Ipswich. I think I've played it to you before on Deep Red Records. This is Deep four. And because I was woken up so early by cold water pouring onto my back, as I described in rather ghastly detail earlier in the programme, it has given me the opportunity to do a bit of research because having been away at Glastonbury last weekend, I got two weeks worth of uh, mail waiting for me at the BBC. And I want you to understand that this is not a complaint, really just indicating to you the truth of what I say when I tell you that records come in at such an astonishing, gratifying rate indeed, that it's impossible to hear them all. Now, uh, I thought that for the purposes of my research, I could pass this information on to you. I would count how many records uh, were in the... Uh, envelopes and things which arrived at, uh, at Radio 1 for me, and bearing in mind that a substantial number arrive at Peel Acres as well, so this is just the stuff that arrives here at the BBC. There were six 10-inch uh, records, I mean, I didn't bother to divide them into LPs and EPs and things, but six 10-inch records, uh, 34 7-inch uh, singles and uh, EPs, 84 12-inch records of one sort or another, I mean, some LPs, uh, some 12-inch uh, singles, and 163 CDs. Now, if you work out, for example, uh, that a CD is probably just, by and large, on average, slightly over an hour, that is a week of continuous listening, day and night. And when you add all of the other things to it, and bear in mind that while I'm doing this, I also have to do things like eat, drink, and go to the lavvy, you'll realise that uh, this is the reason why I fall further and further and further